Well, I'm leaving camp and I'm heading for the ocean. Well, not really, but I am gonna cook up some crab cakes. Poor man's version of crab cakes. We are not scrimping on flavor, but folks, we are saving you some money on this recipe. So come on, get on the boat and let's go. Thank y'all for stopping by the barn today, but a bigger thank you than that for all the prayers that all of y'all showed to me and Shan. You lifted us up and we're so proud for the procedure that I had last week. What was it? A cardiac ablation. That is a big word for me to control the AFib that I have. Uh, and medicine controls that. But more importantly, they wanted me to get off the medicine. But you know how they punish you for that just a little? They bring you some turkey bacon for breakfast. Oh my gosh, thank y'all for praying for me because it was tough getting by the turkey bacon, it was. Integris Baptist Heart Hospital up there at Oklahoma City, the nurses and all the staff that took care of us was such a blessing. And folks, so many times they have such a thankless job. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip my hat to them and say, Praise the Lord for these folks, and uh, we appreciate all the healthcare workers that are out there because I know y'all put in some long hours. And uh, folks, if you know some of them people, give them a pat on the back and hug and say, I appreciate what you do. But what are we talking about this week? Whew. Something that I dearly love in a restaurant, but I can't hardly ever find them because it takes water. And what has Shan always told me we are here? Landlocked. Now you folks in the northeastern part of the United States, bear with me on this because this is what we call poor man crab cakes. Now the first thing you do is you gotta mix up the seasoning. Now I'm not gonna be terribly down upon you if you wanna run to the store and buy some Old Bay seasoning or some other seafood seasoning, but folks, this stuff here brings out so much flavor. But the thing I really like about it the most is the red pepper flakes, the ginger, allspice, coriander, a little nutmeg in there. It brings out such great flavors mixed with our original seasoning. You gotta have it or you can go buy it. Now let's talk about what? Crab meat. Now folks, when we're talking poor man's crab meat, I went to the store, I did. And in fact, I'll just go right over here and I'll show you. No, I won't, cause it ain't here, so. <laughs> Now, folks, when we talk about that crab, and we talked about lump crab that you could buy, or you can buy crab legs and split them and get your own meat, but then there's that stuff that they call imitation crab. <gasps> I don't even know what the imitation is. Is it made out of SpongeBob SquarePants, maybe? <laughs> I ain't got a clue. But I'll be finding, this is what I like to use right here, white crab meat. Now this is minced. Now, I'm gonna leave a little juice in there. I'm gonna show you when we get through because you can get these too dry and then you know what happens? They fall apart and they crumble when you try to fry them. So do not do this in the house, but you can do it out here under the barn. We're gonna call that good for customer number one. And these are two four ounce cans. So, whew. and this is sort of in a way a spinoff too of our salmon patties. If y'all hadn't checked that video out, it was really a live cook along, wasn't it, Shan? I think so. Man, I do be loving me some of them salmon patties. I said, yep. So y'all be- Is it salmon no. or salmon? Here in the central part of Southwest Oklahoma and on ranches, we call it salmon patties. Let's yeah. take a vote. Good Lord created people that made alphabet, you know what I mean? <laughs> what? They did. And they said, we're gonna- we use every letter. S-A-L-M-O-N. Now, if he hadn't put that word in there or that letter, we wouldn't be using it. But I figured he had it in there for a reason. So it's salmon patties for y'all. But for me, it's salmon patties, okay? And it's gonna be good. So partially drained, I'd say three-fourths of the way. Go ahead and dump that crab meat in there. Big's doing the leftover work over here, making sure. Get them both in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and add to that. And I've, you can do this with Ritz crackers regular saltine crackers, but I really prefer Italian style breadcrumbs. Uh-huh. And we're going to use about a third of a cup. Now, I don't have a third of a cup out here with me. Shocking. But I would say that's pretty close, which is also five tablespoons. They don't be selling no fresh parsley at my little local store here, but I do have some dried. So we're going to put that in there. Yes, sir, about that much. And also, some green onion, as Justin Wilson would say, because you gotta have it. This is what's happening. 
get that really combined well, everything incorporated, because we want to make sure that them breadcrumbs is sort of coated all amongst that crab meat. So don't think you're just going to stir it once or twice and quit, because that ain't going to happen. So let's put together the wet that goes with it and start off with we're using what we call Grey Poupon, Dijon mustard. Yes, when we're making poor man's crab cakes, yeah. we're spending our money on the mustard, <laughs> folks. Yes, we are. I ain't going to scrimp on that because it's such a great flavor here. I've tried it with honey mustard, but I really be liking this better. And we're going to use a fourth of a cup. So to that, we're going to add a fourth of a cup of Duke's mayonnaise. You got to have some Dukes. And I think, thank the folks in the southeastern part of the United States for turning me on to that. It is plenty good. One large egg. Oh no, and some of that shale. That's another thing about a store-bought egg. The shells is so thin and flimsy. To that, the famous Wor I ain't gonna say it. Worcestershire sauce, yes. Where's your sister sauce? Yes. And to that, we're gonna go ahead and mix. Time for that knockoff better than Old Bay seasoning we are. So, if I can get it in there. And I want you to know that you can adjust this to your taste. I will give you a little tip on this. If you want to go ahead and put this together ahead of time and let it sit for about 15 minutes in the refrigerator or the ice box, it'll bring out a little more flavor. What happens now? Well, I need you to go ahead and get you a vessel that we're going to fry in. Get you a shallow fry of oil. I'm talking about maybe three quarters of an inch. More, that's about all we're going to need. Go ahead and get that to preheating because we need it up to about 350 degrees. Let's go ahead and mix this. And this is the part, folks, to where we may have to say we need a few more breadcrumbs. And that smells so good. Reminds me of going to Connecticut and seeing my good friend Joe Parlanti and having some crab cakes up there because... It's bringing back some flavor right there it is. We'll get that mixed up. We're going to use a spoon. Mm -hmm. So let's see where we're at. I'd say we're pretty close, folks, but just to err on the side of I want a little more. Oh, we so you want it to hold? Okay, gotcha. I mean, it's not going to plumb stay on the spoon, but it ain't just going to run off there 90 miles an hour like that. Gotcha. This is pretty good. So, oil is preheating. I'll meet y'all over to the burner. Crab cake. It's hard for me to get out. Crab cake frying time is what it is. Yes. So, folks, I'm going to probably go ahead and do them this way to where Shan will me to dress them up a little for y'all. So, make sure you got enough breadcrumbs in there to where you can actually form a ball-like and then pat them down to where they are prettier. Right, Shen? I'd say that's probably close to a fourth of a cup of the crab mixture. So, do you, is that the size that's you would like? Pretty. Okay, we're going to lay them down in there so gently. And you can uh, use a little flour on your hands if you want or some breadcrumbs, but just get everybody mixed up well. Give them a friendly little pat there. Don't abuse them, just give them a little pat. The smell that's coming off of there is mm, so good, it reminds me of like I was driving an old fisherman's boat out in the ocean, trolling for crabs or however y'all catch them with a net. I don't have no idea because we don't have them here. But it does bring back a thing at thinking, mm, y'all gonna be shocked on this one, folks. Talking about going on the ocean, 2024, we gonna have a cruise. Yes, the cowboy is going on a cruise. We're calling it a Taste of Cowboy Cruise. Good friends of mine, Andy Nelson and Bryn Hill, be along there with me. We're going to have some cooking demonstrations, some poetry, some singing, a lot of laughter, and a lot of good time. Now, there will be a link down there to where you can get some more information about this. But, folks, if the cowboy is going to have to go to sea, I think y'all need to come along and join me because we're going to have us a good time. We are. But be sure and check that out. Me, I gotta turn some crab cakes.
I think the folks in the Northeast might not be looking quite so down on Miss Shan as they was at the start because folks, them things are smelling good and looking good. I'm gonna let them cool, so while we're doing that, remember when you're making them in a ball and you put them down in there, remember, don't turn them things too early. Let them go three to four minutes aside. You can see them start to brown up the side there and then you can flip them oh so gingerly because if you get carried away and think it's like a pancake, you're just gonna crumble them all up. Remember, crab capes are really sort of soft on the inside, oh so chewy and goodness it is. I am so ready to have me a bite of these and you can use Worcestershire sauce, you can make roumelade, you can make tartar sauce. I'm just using ketchup. Mm. Okay, now, and you've had really good crab cakes. Oh, I have. So, and I know this is poor man style, but like, are we, are we close? I would say we're real close. Uh, I, I'll eat them every day of the week. So I'm gonna get right over here and we're gonna do the slow motion crab cake frying jamboree. Drive the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Drive the boat. Get over and get some of them crab cakes. Woo! Fine dining they are. Look at them pups wanting to buy. He's slobbering so bad. I felt bad for my puppies. I did. And we have, have a deer we've been harvesting on. So I've got to have my puppies. Which, will that be next week's episode? Yes, it will, folks. Y'all be sure to tune in next week because we're going to do like a mountain man venison chili. Old traditional way that they used to do it. Grandson, he done shot him a deer this morning. So, all right, Duger, thank you, buddy. Meiji, don't bite my face. Oh, Beagle Dog, and the Lulu. Well, we hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I thank y'all, and I thank God that I'm on back on this side of the camera again this week because we are so proud to have y'all as family and be able to cook up with y'all just food, friends, and a good time it is. But as always, I tip my hat and it is with great pride and honor to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying there behind us. But the rest of you, I got something I won't tell you, do. Christmas season is upon us, it is. And remember, I look at Christmas every day as a gift because when we have Christmas 365 days a year, hey, we get a present every day. That is just the fact that we get to be here and get to see y'all. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the poor man's crab cake trail. This is honey, this is Dijon. Yeah, it's the fancy stuff. Say it in a French accent. Dijon. That's... Dijon. Dijon. Yeah, that's better. Well, the fancier the bottle, the tougher the childproof label is. Nose is running faster than I can lick it. Ready to go? I become. So that is real crab meat. Yes, ma'am. It says right here on the side of the can. If I could read it with my glasses on, crab meat. That's what it says. <laughs>